Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and this week, well, just yesterday and today, actually, I made this little paper mache mouse. It was really easy to make. It went together really quickly. There's one layer of paper strips and paste on there, a little bit of paint, and it was done. I really wanted to do something but make it really fast because I've got a lot of projects that I really had to do outside with the garden and the chickens and all that stuff. So sometimes, you know, real life gets in the way, but you still want to make something. So that's what this guy is. And there's two other reasons why I wanted to make him. One of the reasons is because I found this uh, bun foot, I think they're called. I, I bought two of these back when I made the little rabbit. Here, here's what she looked like. <laughs> And it was really fun, I, but when I went to the store to buy the bases, that these are actually bases for like the bottom of a couch or a really short ottoman or something, then you buy them at the hardware store. And I couldn't decide which one I wanted, so I bought two. And I just a couple of days ago, I found this one in my closet. So I thought, hey, I got to do something with that. And so I made a little, little mouse. This is way too big for him, I know. But I still think it's kind of cute. Um, the other reason was that when I was making a, a, a gift for my nephew and his new bride, this is what it looked like. And when I got to the point where I was making that small, that little baby mountain goat, I found out that there is a way to use the interior patterns for really small sculptures in a way that I never had never done before. It was really easy and it's a way that you can um, just speed up the process when you're making something really small like this. I went really fast. This is not my best work. <laughs> it's not going to win any prizes, but I, I just think he's really cute. He's got a little um, piece of cheese he's holding on to. Let me show you how it was done. Oh, before I do though, I want to let you know this video is sponsored by my daughter, Jessie Rashi. Of course, I always enjoy having an opportunity to brag about my daughter because she is an award-winning oil painter. She's shown her work all over the country. And now she's also teaching art online. She's got Zoom classes. They're group coaching workshops that she shares on Zoom. If you would like to participate yourself, just go to jessierashi.com slash Johnny, make sure you spell my name right because if you go to that page, you will actually get a discount on her workshops. Uh, she's giving that discount only to people who find her uh, website through my website or through my YouTube channel. So go check it out. I'm also going to put a link down below so make sure that you don't miss it. Now let me show you how I made this mouse. Now, the way I did it is I drew a little mouse and then I copied it so I turned it over so I could have two mice that were the same size. Um, you can you can use my mouse if you want to or just go ahead and draw your own. I printed both of them on a full sheet label and then stuck them onto some cereal box cardboard. Because mice are made up of really simple shapes, so it would be just as easy to draw a mouse right on the cardboard, and then cut it out and turn it upside down, and then just uh, draw right around the outside edges, and then cut out the second mouse, and you'd have uh, two pattern pieces that are exactly the same, which is basically what I did with a little bit of help from technology, but I didn't really need to do it that way. Now, I only cut out the big ear that's on the pattern, I also cut down into the head, as you can see right here, right along the line of the ear because I wanted to make it a little bit easier to curve the ear a little bit more naturally. But it might actually be easier to cut separate ears and tape them on after the padding's been added to the head. I just wanted to try it this way first. I have been using foil and hot glue for a lot of my recent armatures. This time I thought I'd use the paper and masking tape instead. With something this small, I was pretty sure that the glue gun was going to burn my fingers. Uh, I just have a tendency to do that, <laughs> and I thought that um, this time I wanted to go back to the old way of doing it and just crumple up some paper and use some masking tape. Now, whether you're using crumpled foil or paper, you want to crumple up just a fairly small piece, but long enough so that it's about the thickness of his tummy and his chest and goes all the way up to his nose. You'll tape it together first at the bottom, right at the tail. And the two pieces, when you look at them from the bottom, are going to look like a V. That puts his legs wide apart and it makes it so his tail pieces come together. Uh, so you can tape those two pieces together right now. Um, that's what I did anyway. I kind of hurried up on that part because I was pretty sure that I would uh, tear it or, or break the tail if I didn't. Uh, tape it together right now. It just makes it a lot stronger. 
Then I also taped the nose together at the other tip of the pattern so that those two pieces come together too. You want a nice point on his nose. Then I filled in the gap. I, I just happened to have one right there on his tummy. Um, it needed a little bit more paper so I added some. I put tape all across the padding and the pattern pieces and I made sure that I was keeping the legs apart at the right distance. And then I added some more crumpled paper to the outside of it to fill in the rounded curves. There's going to be slightly more tape on those areas where there's a dotted line because that's where his hips and shoulders are. I happened to forget <laughs> that I was going to put him on the bun foot and the bun foot has uh, a bolt on the bottom of it and he has to be over that so I had to put a hole in it. That meant I had to go back and take some of the paper out but it didn't take very long. Now I am going to be using the bun foot as a stand so that he can uh, have some nice secure place to sit while he's, the paper mache is drying. So I did cover it with a small piece of foil. You could use plastic too. And then I mixed up some raw flour and water paste. I've got a um, a, a recipe for that on my website. I'll put a link to it down below. I, I tore some really narrow paper strips off. Uh, I also have a, a video showing you five tips for applying paper strips and paste and I'll put that in a link below too. If you want to use uh, paper mache clay you can but this guy is so tiny that it, it, you, you'd have almost all of your batch left over. This would be a good thing to use though if you already have uh, something that you've made with paper mache clay and you want to use up uh, a little bit that's left, that would be good. But for something this little, I don't, I don't think I would uh, mix up a whole batch just for this guy. You could though. It would work. It definitely would work. I wanted to make the ears just a little bit more realistic so I rolled up some really thin kind of noodles of paper and paste and I put them around the edges of the ears and I used more strips of paper to hold them on. And then I left the whole thing to dry overnight. Now I'm just going to hit him with a little bit of sandpaper just because there's a couple of rough spots mostly because of the, um, the paste. It kind of, you know, it's a little bit bumpy. So I'm just hitting it really fast with the light sandpaper here. I'm not going to get carried away. And you don't need to do this. I mean, I just, I just wanted to this time. When it was dry completely, I covered it with a coat of acrylic gesso. Uh, that seals the paper and it covers up the writing and the pictures on the newspaper. And that way you have a nice white ground to work on when you're painting. You don't have to use acrylic gesso. A lot of people ask me that and no, you don't have to. Um, but I like doing it myself so that's what I did. As soon as the gesso was dry I mixed white, black and a tiny little bit of burnt sienna and that made a nice soft warm gray. I painted the entire mouse that color and then while it was still wet I mixed up some white with a small amount of water and I painted it over the mouse's tummy to make it lighter. I actually just used my finger to rub the edges so that it, um, it blends in really well. Then I added two round black eyes and a black nose and I painted this cheese orange. I'm not really sure why cheese is orange. I, I've never thought about that before until I started painting this guy and I just bought some cheddar cheese. It's almost exactly that color but, but now I'm wondering if maybe they put some dye in it or something. I don't know. But I'm digressing here. Okay, I added two tiny little dots of white in the eyes for reflections. And then I knocked my, my light stand over. <laughs> and this guy got knocked over on the floor. But he survived it and the only thing that actually happened was that a little bit of the black paint on his nose got rubbed off so I just put it back. <laughs> and now he's fine. Now he is done painting wise but I am going to let him dry completely overnight and then I'm going to use some uh, deco art ultra matte. It just happens to be an acrylic uh, varnish that I really like because it doesn't doesn't shine and I don't think a, a mouse wants to be shiny. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to varnish this bun foot. I might, I don't know, I haven't decided whether or not that needs to be painted darker. I'm kind of thinking maybe if I do that, in any case, he's going to get some varnish so that it doesn't get uh, stained. Let me know what you think. Do, do you think this little guy needs uh, a dark base or do you think he's okay with this one? Let me know. Put the comment down below. Remember to go check out Jesse's new workshops too and then go make something and come visit me.
ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.